Hallelujah. You are welcome to today's broadcast. It's a pleasure coming on your way with the word of God. May you read with me from the book of Hebrews, chapter number 2, reading from verse 1 to verse 3. Therefore, we ought to give the most earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them sleep. For if the word is spoken by angels, we steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord, and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. Father, anoint this message and bless my listeners. In Jesus' name, amen. I am speaking on the topic, no salvation, no escape. No salvation, no escape. Theologically speaking, salvation is simply deliverance from sin and its consequences through faith on the Lord Jesus Christ. That is salvation. Permit me to observe that salvation is the greatest and the costliest free gift of God to mankind. Salvation is man's passport and visa to heaven. Without it, no traveling to heaven and no spending eternity with God in his eternal kingdom. The salvation of man is the reason for Jesus coming into the world and dying on the cross of Calvary. Jesus himself buttressed this when he said, in Luke chapter 19, verse 10, I quote, For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Unquote. Being religious without having salvation is useless. And going to church without having salvation is a waste of time, waste of energy, money, and life. Because no salvation, no escape. In the book of Hebrew where we read, we see this message. No salvation, no escape. And it was delivered by the author of the book of Hebrews. Where we read, the Bible says, We must pay closer attention to what we have heard, lest we drift away from it. I love this. We must pay close attention to what we have heard from the word of God, from what we have heard from the prophets, from what we have heard from Jesus, our Lord and Savior, from what we have heard from the preachers, those who preach the sound of the word of God. We must pay close attention to it so that we don't drift away from it. Words that were spoken by angels were steadfast, that is, were reliable. And every transgression received his recompense of reward. Every transgression, every sin received his punishment. Punishment. Let me tell you, even to today, every sin must be punished. Every disobedience to God must be punished. And the Bible says, 
How can we escape? We neglect such a great salvation. Since every word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression was punished, how then can we escape when we ignore such a great salvation? Those of us who have heard the message about salvation, the message of being born again, the message concerning the death of Jesus on the cross, the message concerning repentance, how can we escape when we ignore being saved? When we ignore such a great salvation, how can we escape? It is called great salvation. The salvation that Jesus offers is a great salvation. The salvation I am offering you today is a great salvation. That salvation that made Jesus to leave his position in heaven and came down to this world. That salvation that made him to lay down his life on the cross of Calvary. That salvation that made him to shed his blood on the cross of Calvary. How can we escape when we ignore it? The salvation that makes a sinner to become a saint, the salvation that makes a child of the devil to become a child of God, how can we escape when we neglect it? How can we escape? May I ask somebody hearing me today, how can you escape when you neglect being saved? How can you escape when you neglect being born again? How can you escape when you don't care about salvation? You are very religious, but you have neglected salvation. You go to church, but you have neglected salvation. You even preach to others, you have neglected salvation. How can you escape when you neglect such a great salvation? How can you escape? May I let somebody know, anybody who neglects salvation can never escape, can never escape. May I give you some instances of people who never escaped God's punishment because of negligence. Here are examples of people who never escaped God's punishment because of negligence. When Adam and Eve neglected God's instruction not to eat of the forbidden fruit in the Garden of Eden, they could not escape God's cause and death. Adam and Eve were punished with a cause and death, and the death is still in the world today. That cause is still in the world today. They could not escape. When you disobey God, when you commit sin and wickedness, you cannot escape. You cannot escape. When the people of the world of Noah neglected the message of Noah, preached among them, and in the salvation that was offered to them in the ark, they could not escape death through the flood. You know that very well. They could not escape death through the flood because they neglected the message you know, preached among them. They neglected the salvation that was offered to them in the ark. They could not escape death by the flood. When the people of Sodom and Gomorrah neglected the message, Lord, the righteous man preached among them, they could not escape, and they were burned to ashes. Oh, yes. Anybody who neglects the gospel, neglects the gospel of salvation, shall never escape, because the people of Sodom and Gomorrah, they never escaped being burned to ashes. When the wife of Lot neglected the instruction given to her by the angel not to look back, she became a pillar of salt. Oh yes, she became a pillar of salt for neglecting the instruction given to her by the angel not to look back. May I let somebody know, if you look back from Christianity, if you look back from following God, and you go back to the devil, you go back to the world of darkness, you cannot escape. You cannot escape. 
when Moses neglected God's directive to speak to the rock at Kadesh, to bring out water for Israelites to drink, but to stroke the rock twice, God punished him by preventing him from entering the land of Canaan. He could not escape the anger of God. And he didn't enter the Canaan he labored for, for about 40 years. Oh, yes, when you neglect God's instructions and directives, you cannot escape the consequences of disobeying God. You cannot escape. When Achan neglected God's instruction to the Israelites not to tamper with the worst boys in Jericho, but went ahead and stole some of the spoils, he could not escape death by stoning. He stole. He took what did not belong to him. He did not escape death by stoning. There is somebody hearing me today. You are an armed robber. You are a kidnapper. You are stealing money, stealing public fund. You are embezzling money. You cannot escape the judgment of God. You cannot escape. You cannot escape. The above instances are eloquent testimonies that those who neglect salvation cannot escape. Cannot escape. I do not care about your religion. I do not care about the church you attend. I do not care about your Christian sect. I want to ask, have you been saved? Have you been born again? Have you received Jesus into your life? Do you have this great salvation? Do you have salvation? Remember, no salvation, no escape. No escape. May I let you know what those who neglected salvation cannot escape from? Those who neglected salvation, what they cannot escape from? Those who have neglected salvation cannot escape the wrath of God. The wrath of God Romans chapter 1 verse 18 says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. Those who are unrighteous, those who are wicked, those who are sinful, those who through their unrighteousness suppress the truth. They suppress the truth. The Bible says, the wrath of God, the anger of God has been revealed from heaven against them. Those who neglect salvation cannot escape the wrath of God. Those who neglect salvation cannot escape the judgment of God. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 14 says, God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing whether it be good or whether it be evil. God is going to judge wicked men. God is going to judge kidnappers. God is going to judge armed robbers. God is going to judge those who shed human blood in this nation. God is going to judge the wicked men. Every of your evil shall be brought to judgment. You cannot escape the judgment of God when you neglect salvation. The only thing that can help you to escape if you is if you accept salvation. If you will come to Jesus and repent and embrace salvation and embrace being born again, that is the only thing that will make you to escape the judgment of God. For the Bible says, concerning this judgment, you cannot escape. In Revelation chapter 20, verses 12 and 13, And I saw the dead, the small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And the dead and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. They were judged, every man, according to their words. If you neglect salvation, you will be judged according to your words. 
Those who neglect salvation cannot escape hell. Hell. This hell is also called Hades in Greek and is surely in Hebrew. And the Hebrews call it Alamor. The Bible says in Psalm 9, verse 17, The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget God. A wicked man shall be turned into hell. No matter who you are, no matter your political position, you shall be turned into hell. No matter your religious position, you shall be turned into hell if you are a wicked man. No matter your wealth, no matter your beauty, you shall be turned into hell if you are a wicked man. No matter your political power, you shall be turned into hell if you are a wicked man. The wicked shall be turned into hell. When you neglect salvation as a wicked man, you shall be turned into hell. You cannot escape hell. And that hell is a place where nobody should go. The Bible tells us of a rich man who went to this hell. The Bible says, the rich man also died and was buried and in hell. He lifted up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off. And the Lazarus in his bosom. That is Luke chapter 16, verse 22. The rich man also died and went to hell. He died and went to hell, for he was a wicked man, for he never served God in his life. He died and went to hell. May I tell you, your riches can never deliver you from going to hell. Your connection in this world will never deliver you from going to hell if you are a wicked man and you have rejected salvation. You cannot escape eternal hellfire. Eternal hellfire. You know, there is a difference between hell and eternal hellfire. Hell is simply a prison yard where God keeps every sinner who dies waiting for the day of judgment. And after judgment, the person will be thrown into lake of fire, which is eternal, eternal hellfire. Anybody who rejects salvation, anybody who refuses to be born again, no matter your religion, no matter your position, even if you are the highest religious man on earth, if you are not saved from your sin, you will never escape eternal hellfire. Revelation 20, 15 says, And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. It is not the will of God that you go into the lake of fire, eternal place of damnation, a place where the worm that eat people never dies, a place where people will stay forever and ever and ever because they rejected salvation. It's not the will of God for you to go there. Therefore, you must accept salvation today. You must accept Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior that he might give you the great salvation today. How can you escape these things? How do you escape these things? If you want to escape all these things I have enumerated, if you want to escape all these things, then you have to accept Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior and the salvation he offers. I say to Jesus, who is the Savior of the world? I say to Jesus, who came and died on the cross of Calvary to give you this great salvation? I say to him and the salvation he gives, and he shall save you. For the Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus, and you shall be saved and your house. As of the Apostle 16, 31. Believe on the Lord Jesus, and you shall be saved. And you shall be saved and your house. No wonder the psalmist is said in Psalm 2 verse 10. Be wise now, therefore, O you kings. Be instructed, O you judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son, kiss the son, lest he be angry and ye perish from the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are those who put their trust in him. I love this. The Bible says, kiss the son. Who is the son? Jesus is the son. Kiss Jesus.
Jesus, the Son of God. Embrace Jesus, the Son of God. All ye kings, all you nobles, all you rich men of the age. The Bible says, embrace Jesus, kissing him, so that God will not be angry with you and you perish because you rejected salvation. If you want to escape, hold firm your salvation. Those of us who have been saved, hold firm your salvation. Remember your salvation is your passport and your visa to heaven. Remember your salvation is your passport and your visa to spending eternity with God in his kingdom. Therefore, hold firm your salvation. Do not sell your salvation. No wonder Jesus said in Revelation chapter 3 verse 11, Behold, I come quickly. Hold fast that which you have, that no man take your crown. Hold fame, your salvation. May I conclude this message today by letting you know, my listener, without salvation, no escape. Have you been saved from your sin and its consequences? Have you accepted Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior? Remember, no salvation, no escape. Believe on Jesus, accept him as your Lord and personal Savior, and he shall give you salvation. He shall give you eternal life, and you will escape the wrath of God, the judgment of God, hell and hell fire. May God bless you as you accept Jesus today and embrace the salvation he offers. Father, I thank you for all my listeners today. Somebody has heard me loud and clear. Somebody who has heard me has not been saved, has not been born again. Save that person today. Somebody who has heard me has been turning with his or her salvation. From today, let the person become fame in holding his or her salvation. Use this message and bless all my listeners all over the world. For in Jesus' name I have prayed. Amen. God bless you.